definitely not the starters. You're on the End of the Bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. What's happening? Happy Thursday. Friday for some of us. It's the end of the bench on 100.7 The Score, 107thescore.com and the 100.7 The Score mobile app alongside Jeff Haxton. I'm Choice Woodman. Lucas White across the way taking care of us as usual today. You can hit us up. Your thoughts, your comments, your questions, hopes, dreams. Not too early for score predictions for the weekend. You know, temperature predictions, wind chill predictions. All 82. <clears throat> 82. I bet that's going to be a little hot for, for Maui. It was 81 yesterday. Was it? Mm-hmm. That's stupid. That's just dumb. That's just dumb. But uh, we'll take it all on the AIDS Flooring Center chat line through the 100.7, the score mobile app. Uh, I, di- I did some looking last night, started the packing process for for Iowa. Did you br- put in your dog sled? I <laughs> have not put in my dog sled yet. Um. Wind chill. That's the problem for this one. Not only is it going to be cold, but the wind chill is supposed to be. Uh, showed me that it, it will be, it feels like seven degrees at kickoff on Saturday. Feels like. Good luck, Chris Level. <laughs> He's got, I'm sitting there thinking of me, and then I think of Level. I'm like, oh boy. At least these guys on the sideline can, uh, you know. Be be by the heaters, sit on the heated benches. They'll have the giant coats, and they'll be you know for the most part moving and running around playing football, so that they can get the blood flowing there. But Chris Level will be mostly stationary, and uh, we well, think it's I, the I won't coldest even blame on him. Level if he goes like hands in the pants football style, just you know sticks them in the in the crotchal area. It'll keep the hands warm. Mm, the crotchal region. That's that's a football move, right? I mean, every. Everybody did that in at least junior high or, or high school. When you're playing football, you got to get put the hands in the pants because you underestimated the cold. So when you were playing, what's the coldest you ever did? Dumas would get pretty cold. Oh, yeah. So, Ice box. Uh, we, we played in sub-freezing temperatures. I'm trying to think of the I mean, heck, they played in snow. Things. Yeah, they played in like snow. Like two Fridays ago. A couple Fridays ago, yeah. There wasn't a lot of snow. Right, it was, but it was but, still like, there was hey, it's early the, November. On and, the turf, yeah. And we've got snow on the ground. Man, um, I remember actually a baseball game being the coldest. That's me too. Oh, my yeah, but of course I didn't goodness know. Goodness gracious. There was one in uh, February. Snow falling. February during. baseball would start up because um, we never made the basketball playoffs, so I didn't get to have to worry about that. Baseball, I, there was this one game against Randall where I think the wind chill was down in the teens, and it was just... Why are we out brutal. here? Brutal. Or maybe it was the actual temperature in the teens. But uh, it was so cold that one time that we were playing that I was pitching because they didn't want to get anybody else hurt. <laughs> here, Hex, we'll use your old and, uh, arm on the mound here. This, uh, do you remember? Um, you remember Kevin Bookout? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, you basketball player? Oh, you. The, he was a punk, right? Yeah, kinda. Or is he just a dislikable guy because he was good? That that I think more than anything. Okay. The, the book outs. I, my memory of him was that I didn't like him. That's yeah. all. I well, remember. He was good. Um, he had a big brother. Was he in the Hollis Price era? Yeah, that range. Okay, I didn't like those teams. He had a big brother named Casey who uh-huh. played baseball for OU, and uh, Casey was even bigger than Kevin, which is hard to believe, mm-hmm. and um, could just absolutely rake. And we're playing Stroud. And he hit one through the snow that I think is still going. And that, and he hit it in 1995. Mm-hmm. My gosh. Yeah, we definitely played uh, a couple had, of snow games. We had a deal called uh, – <laughs> so we had the field. And then in left field, it would drop off after the fence. And then you had the drive that you come in. You come in by and you're in your car. And then once you get past the left field foul pole, you – turn in there so over over the little gravel drive to get in was just a an old waste pipe yard Mm -hmm. so if you really hit one they say you hit it in the pipe yard Hit in the pipe yard yeah and he hit it in the pipe yard Mm. where'd it go the lumber yard Mm. 
Do you remember the weirdest field you ever played at? I'm not trying to derail us too much. No, that's okay. I, I, there's several. Um, I, in Elk City. That's the one for yeah. me. We played yeah. a road game in Elk City my now, How do you year. remember it? it? It's a stone fence. And it's like center four, field's like six hundred. Yeah, I was about to say it was like four eighty to center field, like not exaggerating. It's, it's like a point, like all the yeah. way out there, and it was a it was like a cobblestone type fence too. Yeah, remember that? Yeah, <laughs> like, but if you, I mean, you don't really have to worry. You about didn't have it to worry about it. So far out. I there. swear, I thought it had a six in front. I thought it was six hundred. Was it really? Yes. Okay, I I, I don't know. For Never sure. ending. But yeah, it's so far out there. So if you get one past the center fielder, then there's a good chance. How about you that? Can get you and I, the, the first one that comes to mind is the Elk City, Oklahoma. Park. I, that's why I brought it up because I'm like, the, home of the, the Elks. weirdest park I ever played in was in. We won that game. I do remember that. Um, yeah, in and, Guthrie, they have a really cool one. It has some of that stone feel to it also. Yeah. Um, but left field is is really unique. It's got a short porch in left mm-hmm. and trees and it's really pretty and then you go to center and so right center opens up into the football field <laughs> so the football field <laughs> runs into right field that's crazy and so they kind of merge together do they have like a movable fence that they put no it's just open just open that's mm-hmm. so what happens if you hit it into the you just chase it down go the get football it. field yeah wow go get know. it Gotta love those weird ballparks. I love that's one thing I love about baseball is just uniqueness of ballparks that can come with it. I mean, no other sport can you get that. Like, I swear to you. This hockey rink has a weird little cutout in the middle of it. Kearney, Oklahoma. Kearney? Down the left field line, two thirty. Dropping bombs on <laughs> on pop ups. <laughs> so the only time just that I ever played in the field. outfield was this all-star game and for some reason they held it at Kearney. Wow. And I'm out Taking there in home runs, I'm probably. out there in left field and they split us Ripley kids up so we had three on this team and three on the other. <clears throat> My buddy Bo hits a routine pop up. And I forget that I'm playing in Kearney. Yeah. And I go back 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 wham just cut Slamming my knee wide ball. open <laughs> right into the oh, fence. I love it. It's like, "Oh, I forgot." Uh we have moved on from baseball to pickleball. We will uh, bring up pickleball a little bit later. Pickleball is one of the more fun things I've ever it's done. It's so much fun. It really is. I, I like. I and I don't worry the... about, and maybe it's because I'm early on, but I don't worry about the wins and losses as much. No. Or maybe that's because I'm old and fat. Every single time I've played so far, it's been the same. I lose like three or four in a row and then win like three or four in a row. It's... You and I pulled a dub. We did get a dub last, last night. night. Mid trash talk. <laughs> there is uh, plenty to get into. Of course, on the tech front, we'll talk tech hoops. We want to get a little preview of Maui. congrats to uh, Lady Raiders. Lady Raiders pulled one out last night. Did not look good for a little bit, but they find a way. So big win for uh, Coach Gerlich on her birthday. We will preview Maui. Have hacks give us a preview. More preview of tech in Iowa State. We can pick them early. We will uh, do that coming up at 10.30 this morning. All of that ahead, it's the end of the bench on 100.7 The Score. Playing time is not required. This is the End of the Bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. Thrilled to be part of your Thursday. You're listening to the End of the Bench on 100.7 The Score and 107thescore.com. He's Jeff Haxton. I'm Choice Woodman. These are your headlines for this Thursday, November the 17th. We'll start off with uh, what Hacks mentioned a little bit ago. Congratulations to the Lady Raiders who pick up a uh, a narrow victory, 86-85, to 85, over the Colorado Buffaloes. And uh, this one didn't look good. Down 16 had to go on an 18 to 2 run to uh I believe tie it at 41. So down early, get it back, then you've got a very back and forth affair and the uh Lady Raiders ultimately get it to overtime, 80 to 80. Nice defensive play at the end of regulation uh to get to overtime and then uh prevail there 86-85. 
Ooh, this one, uh, if you're a Lady Raider fan, had you probably breathing pretty heavily. But a muy importante win for uh, Coach Garlic. Can't lose two in a row on your home floor, uh, especially after losing to Jackson State the night before. So, big win for Coach Garlic. Oh, Jackson company. State did beat Louisiana by almost 30. Which is who Texas Tech plays next, next yeah. in uh, on Sunday. Lafayette. In Lafayette. So, that one's... Uh, the, the, maybe Jackson State's really good. I guess if you're the Lady Raiders, that's what you're hoping for, is that they turn out to be a really good basketball team this year. But that uh, that win last night, a good one, because it was the first loss of the season that you handed to Colorado as well. Uh, other headlines for you this evening. We've got uh, Red Raider football with Joey McGuire coming your way on Double T 97.3. Final show of the year. This is the wrap-up uh, at 6 o'clock this evening on Double T 97.3. Of course, no show next week because it will be Thanksgiving next Thursday. Uh, also, on the airwaves, we've got Titans and Packers starting up at 6 o'clock right here on 100.7. The score. Are the Packers back? Or are you taking the Titans oh, no. in this one? Oh, no. No, no. They're yeah. not back. No. I, I'm taking the Titans in this one. I wouldn't... I wouldn't mess no, with the Titans Packers. are a whole lot tougher than the Pack, that's for sure. Well, Aaron Rodgers was kind of talking this week like, uh, oh, yeah, that was a turning point for us. That was, that was just the Cowboys it. melting down. That was the first time that Mike McCarthy helped. Randall Cobb's going to be back. Yeah. First time Mike McCarth- McCarthy helped the Packers team win in a long time. But he did, unfortunately. Uh, got high school football for you this evening. Just a handful of games. Not uh, not a whole lot on Thursday night, but a whole lot on Friday. This week's Thursday night games, the Godly Wildcats and Seminole Indians uh, square off at McMurray and Abilene, Wilford Moore Stadium there at 7 o'clock tonight. Mule Shoe Mules up, up against the Brock Eagles in the Mustang Bowl in Sweetwater. That's at 7 tonight. And then uh, New Deal up against the Forsan Buffaloes. That one's at Mustang Stadium in Denver City at 7 o'clock tonight. So those are all the Thursday games for you. Plenty going on tomorrow, including the uh, two teams we'll carry, Friendship and Lubbock Cooper. Friendship against South Lake Carroll, Lubbock Cooper against Alito. Friendship on Double T 97.3 and Cooper on 100.7. The score... All sorts of other teams in action. Shallow Water, Estacado, Idaloo, Rawls, New Home, Sudan, Andrews. Lots of teams in the area. In action tomorrow. Good luck to all of our area. Lubbock area high school playoff teams. Hope they can make quite the run coming up. Uh, Justin Verlander claims his third career Cy Young Award. This guy's ageless. I mean, what what's going on there? And he, he defies everything about pitchers today. I mean, he's coming off of Tommy John surgery, too. When's Cy Young? Two words. Kate Upton. <laughs> I knew you were going to go there. If you said one ro- word, I'd have been like steroids. But no, Kate Upton. He's not a Roid user. I'm just jealous. And just jealous of Kate Upton, too. Oh, man. It's crazy to see what Justin Verlander has done in his career. And I am very jealous that the Astros have and the Rangers don't. But um, he is impressive, to say the least. He's probably the last pitcher. The last pitcher that will be able to win 300 games in his career. And probably the last that's going to hit the 4,000 strikeout mark. There's only four, four other, I think four other pitchers at those marks right now. Um, and they're all longevity pitchers. But think about it, no one else goes. Like, it seems like every pitcher nowadays in Major League Baseball is really good for two, three seasons starting pitchers. Like even Clayton Kershaw. Kershaw's still good, but... They don't have their prime last for a decade or more like Justin Verlander has. Like Nolan Ryan did. Like Randy Johnson did. 
Like those kind of pitchers that are truly longevity guys. Um, you have guys that are really good, untouchable. I mean, like the Barry Zitos of the world. Barry Zito was untouchable for a while there. Barry Zito. Remember him? Yeah. Oh, of course. And then, but then he was nothing. Yeah. I mean, he fell off flat. Tim Lincecum, another one. Man, are you Super doing research on your pitchers, man? No, I'm just thinking of these guys that flashed. I haven't heard like those a, names in forever. Right, but that's that's what I'm thinking of. It's just like guys that... Tim Lincecum. <laughs> that, and it's not like a flash of one season. It's a flash of three, four, five years. But Verlander's just against the grain. And that's all the Astros praise I'll give for the whole offseason, probably. Uh, last headline for you. TJ Vasher drafted. Saw that. Brahmas. By the San Antonio Brahmas. That's one of my favorite names for sure. The San Antonio Brahmas pick up TJ Vasher in the XFL draft yesterday. I think there's another, uh, I think they're going all defense in the draft today. It's weird. They're drafting basically rounds by position groups is how they've done this. They did quarterbacks first. They did skill positions all together in a certain number of rounds. Um, They'll do... I think a few rounds of safeties and, and all DBs together. And then, uh, yeah. So in the offensive side, Vasher was the only one, uh, only Red Raider to go. You might see a couple of Red Raiders on the defensive side, though. Just be careful because now Choice is going to put XFL games on our weekend pick em <laughs> challenge. I don't think they'll start for a while, so we're okay. Well, uh, just be prepared because this is going to happen. Prepare. Be prepared. Our weekend pick em challenge is going to be a little different this week. Did you um, talk about the draft? Oh, no. The Thanksgiving one? Not yet. I hadn't brought it up yet. Because you're getting killed. What? What? Who predicted that? So am I, though. Yeah. Jackson. Jackson's running away with Jackson, it. Jackson, flaxen, waxen. We wouldn't even have... As of right now, we wouldn't have even had to have a uh, runoff. He's over 50% of the vote. Do you have the, the numbers? I'll pull them up. 55.3 Jackson, 28.2 me, 16.5 you. Fake news. <laughs> Who doesn't like... Uh, Lucas, Which where would your vote lie with uh, this particular draft? Have you seen it? I have, and I did vote. Let me see. I think I voted for group number two. Which is the leading group. Yeah. Honey glazed ham, mashed taters, mac and cheese, Suckers. apple pie, and deviled Suckers. eggs. Suckers. Which one? That what was are Jackson. Y'all? Oh, okay. Um... <laughs> My uh, Jackson can't come in here and just win a draft. No, he can't. But he just did, unless we get an influx of votes. I was disappointed in my draft strategy, Hanks. I just really well, I was in disappointed in myself it. when I looked at the pictures. I was like, you know, dressing and stuffing can be considered your bread. Yeah, you didn't. You were forcing the bread. You yeah. So what would you have replaced? You had the last pick. If if you would have gone in the fifth round, what would you have done? I don't know. What should I have done? Well, you went corn on the cob over cream corn too. That's uh, I would have gone cream corn. No, cream corn. Thanksgiving. No, yeah. no. Um, I was really disappointed that I let Jackson take deviled eggs from me. I'm a big deviled eggs guy, and I could have got it. I thought that was you when I looked the original lead. No. I thought I was like, oh, Joyce mm-hmm. picked the deviled eggs. No. What's what's even sadder? Jackson's gonna beat us without having the bird. He doesn't even have turkey, and he's gonna beat us in the Thanksgiving draft. It's depressing. He whipped us. All right, more of your thoughts on the Ace Flooring Center chat line next. Playing time is not required. This is the end of the bench podcast from one hundred point seven. The score. Number two, you're hanging with the end of the bench on 100.7 The Score and 107thescore.com. He's Jeff Haxton. I'm Choice Woodman. Lucas White across the way taking care of us. Continue to 
Join us. Your thoughts, your comments, your questions, all welcome on the Yates Flooring Center chat line through that 100.7 The Score mobile app. Keep this number handy. Not just yet, but hold on to it. 806-771-0973. That's the number to the benchmark hotline. 806-771-0973. We will pick games about 30 minutes from right now. Uh, doing our weekend pick'em challenge a little early because Hax and I will be en route to various areas tomorrow. <clears throat> very, very opposite type of areas. Get a uh, preview from Senor Haxton in a moment. I'm worried about, I keep talking about uh, my cold weather and the Tech football team's cold weather. Do you see what's potential in uh, Buffalo this weekend? Lake effect snow? Six feet of snow potentially projected. There's nothing like Six I mean, feet. <laughs> I saw someone tweet, six feet of snow, and then the two running backs in the game, Devin Sing- Singletary, five foot seven. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, these guys aren't going to be able to see where they're running. <laughs> oh, isn't that crazy? I, I love snow games to watch on TV, but man. There's been a lot of it. I would. There's some action last night <clears throat> that had snow. There's quite a bit of snow uh, in Ames this past week, but of course that'll be off the field by my game time. So <laughs> that is unbelievable. Six feet of snow uh, potential. I don't know what it's like in Bozeman, Montana. Going to be cold. College game day heading to Bozeman. Are they doing this purely for Yellowstone? Not kidding. Like, what, what's the purpose of doing a Montana, Montana State game the week that Yellowstone comes out? Is this why? Because it's such a popular thing right now. I mean, I think because you got two great Pac-12 games going on this weekend. I think they're. they're uh, I think this, they've kind of turned this year into the uh, <clears throat> exploring places we've never been, checking but, off, checking check marks for these places. There's still quite of quite a few FBS places they've never been, or not? Excuse oh, me. Oh, it's like three, isn't it? Three or four? Is that it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then I, I'm mistaken. I guess I just don't remember a lot of these. Not FBS, but... Five power, or six. Power five. But they, they're going to these FCS places. Usually they do one a year. A lot of times that's what they've done. I think this is the third trip to an FCS. Well, think about it. How long's, how long's game day been around? 20 years? At least, yeah. Yeah, you, probably. You get to a point where been there, done that. And I guess I mean so. think of how many times they've been to they were in Austin last weekend. Austin. Norman. Mm-hmm. All the blue blood. Columbus. Tuscaloosa. Gainesville, blah, 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 all down the line. And they got you know, hey, let's let's take our brand to a different place. I guess location. This makes more sense than the yeah. Jackson State one to me. Yes, it does. It does. The location, I guess, doesn't keep people from watching, does it? No. So, it, it, I it think may, it might it actually. Affect- hey, I've never seen what Bozeman, Montana looks like. Let's <laughs> dial up game day. We can true. check it out. That's true. Well, you could see it on Yellowstone, too. So, Bozeman, Montana, the site for college game day this weekend. Kind of. So, kind I of still haven't watched season four. Can I just pick up five? Uh-uh. Got to go back four? Yeah, there's too much that uh-huh. goes on at four. It's one of those shows, you know. I mean, you've seen the other seasons where there's too many separate storylines going on at once that I feel like you have to. Well, it looks like I know what I'll be watching tomorrow on the plane. A lot of a lot of Yellowstone eight hours. Mm-hmm. I was on a plane for eight hours, but well, it wasn't moving. So hopefully, your eight hour experience is a little better. That's what I'm going to keep in mind. Yeah, when you're on there, it's like at least we're. We're heading in the right yeah, direction. At least we're in the air. We're not sitting for eight not hours. Not on wood. Yeah. No, 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 no. Got to knock on wood. Well, also, Bozeman kind of fits because you know what this week is. It's the rolling bye week in the SEC. Mm-hmm. How do they get away with that? I mean. When they they play conference games in week two. They get a, Why? Why are, is there no more accountability for it? What do you, you You've had this. I hate it. Snag about hate it. FCS teams. No, 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 no. I hate that it's the placement of it. Why do they get to do this? In because week, they play week conference 11? games in week two. Okay, so so the the Big Twelve would be 
killed for doing this. They only get away with it because they're the SEC. If, if I really don't 12, see why it's a big deal. Because we're into the the great yeah, but meat we, of college but we football. Didn't, we didn't have to worry about it in week two. If I'm saying if the Big 12 chose to play games in week two, which they did actually. One of them. Okay. They still played one, and they played one in week three. If the Big 12 were to move games to week two and week three and play some of these FCS matchups, then you get crushed for having a weak schedule. It, it turns into a narrative. It's Have you seen, and I'm not going to sit here and defend TCU, which I hate right now, but have you seen some of these talking heads talking about TCU? TCU has the number one rated strength of schedule in the country. And they right said now. they hadn't played anybody. And they keep talking about how TCU hadn't played anybody. They've got the toughest strength of schedule in the country because of how tough the Big 12 has been. Now, since there aren't na- numbers next to the names, you look at overall records in the Big 12, it's really good. Again, 10 teams right now could get to bowl games. Probably changes after this weekend. Actually, we hope it changes after this weekend. But it's crazy how narratives, perception, rules the day in college football. I know that, and I I agree about perceptions and narratives. Mm -hmm. When it comes to logos and tradition and stature, but why is this on your radar? I don't know. I just frustrations of <laughs> that, the perceptions and narratives and inequalities of of college football. I get it. The SEC is great. It is. I don't deny that. It's just you don't have to act like the Big 12 is not or that, that other leagues are not because the SEC has some good football teams. You don't have to, to treat other leagues so much lesser so much lower. And my point is, it, again, if if the Big 12 were to do the exact same thing, if TCU were to go up against an Alabama A&M this weekend, they'd get crushed for it. They'd probably lose a spot in the college football playoff because they just play, beat an Alabama A&M 65-23. to 23. I don't know why I came up with that score. 23 is a weird college football score. It's a lot of points for an FCS, too. It is. <laughs> Someone just said, thanks for knocking on the table. You just set my dog off, Choice. He's trying to kill whoever's on the other side of the door. <laughs> my bad. Didn't mean to. But it's kind of funny. Uh, like uh, I could say, Alexa, order me toilet paper. And I might have just ordered someone toilet paper at their house. Oh, yeah. Set I would come off. up to the station and smack you if you did <laughs> if that. that actually worked. Exercise and lows are coming your way next on 100.7 The Score. Definitely not the starters. You're on the end of the bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. Thrilled to be part of your Thursday. It's the end of the bench on 100.7 The Score and the 100.7 The Score mobile app. Fox 34 News now on the television side of things. Alongside Jeff Haxton, I'm Choice Woodman. Handful more of your thoughts. Get your questions in. Ask the bench warmers. Not too far away. Panhandle Raider says Hax is one lucky man watching tech football in 85 degree sunny weather while Raider Nation is freezing in Ames. Not bad. Uh, Bobby Hot Dog says I see Choice as a duster type of guy. <laughs> I've never worn a duster. I wouldn't mind owning a duster, but I've never, never worn one. Uh, Raiders dad said, mark it on your calendar. Woodman just jinxed it. What did I jinx this time? Oh, the uh, the home winning streak for Adams. He's, I'm sorry. He's going to lose a game at some point. Yeah. So one of these years, he's going to lose a game. He's not going to go undefeated for the career. If he wants to, prove me wrong, I will be uh, thrilled for that. But he's going to lose a game at some point. Uh, but I'm saying the advantage at home is unlike... I mean, seriously, Hex, you've you've been all over the place. Home atmospheres, truthfully, you you have one of the best 
five to ten in the country. It it's there there are very few that can can rival what you've got going at United Supermarket Serena and, and basketball. Right? Oh, no yeah. doubt. Just so uh this texture says Kansas and Texas Tech are dead even. And they each have their own little nuances. Mm-hmm. But I've had people in the league after games here say, hey, this place is better than Kansas. Hmm. It's crazy, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> and people like me you've gotten to that. that have been everywhere, seen everything. Yeah, so. yeah you've been all over the place. And I, I keep saying it. I mean, the OSU atmosphere in Eddie Sutton, early 2000s, was remarkable as far as just sheer loud mm-hmm. and uh to see what it is today is just it's it's heartbreaking uh, it's just i mean they could go back to the old gallagher and not fill it right now yeah. which was six thousand. First tax gets a freebie on the tiny wheel now he gets bikinis and palm trees in the same week let's go apparently hacks his d- prayers to be like the woodmans are being answered <laughs> ah, dear lord i've seen what you've done for the woodmans and i know you can do the same for hey me. What are you talking about? I don't have b- bikinis and palm trees this week. I get weird, this is all weird payback people in Iowa. It's all payback for having to basically live in the Dakotas mm-hmm. from January first to March fifteenth for five of those eleven years, mm. and then again, man, we did some of the weirdest, dumbest stuff when we were there. We would stay. In Heard some stories, yeah. We'd stay in Chicago, bus to Fort Wayne, Indiana, which is three and a half hours, mm-hmm. play, and then bus back to Chicago. To fly. Wow. And Fort Wayne's not a bad city. Yeah. Second biggest city in Indiana. Now, the sun never shines there, and it's cold and miserable. Yeah. But we just That's did some weird stuff. Biggest? Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't have guessed that. Fort Wayne's almost in Ohio. And you're you're busting from Chicago what, on Crazy. game day. What what are we doing here? Sounds like you should have been an ops guy instead. Uh, bad draw. You want you want to play weak teams all season non con. This isn't win or go home. I want to play Creighton better than another soft team. We're favored by twenty plus over. I just said. I mean, bad draw is for the first round. You want to play Creighton in the championship. That's what you want, right? I mean, that's. That would be the more ideal setup if you hey, get a, a San Diego State or an Arizona. And the there's nothing draft. saying to me, Choice, that I mean they've played Holy Cross and St. Thomas and Creighton. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's see. No, I, I think the part that scary scares that scares me about St. Thomas, Creighton, North Dakota, and Holy Cross. The what, part, I'm, what I was getting to was there's no guarantee that you don't step out there and they look a whole lot like Gonzaga did last night. Mm-hmm. That's possible. The part that scares me is the the experience on the Creighton team. They've got a, a good amount of experience and uh, guys that were there last year, and that's what makes me a little more nervous because you've got a team that's full of the opposite, guys that have not played a lot together. So that's where I'm a little nervous. But, I got again, a you're breaking right. news for you. I like breaking news. Major League Baseball All-Star Game, Arlington, Texas. All right. 2024. Let's go. Let's go. I bet we can get some into the bench passes for that. Oh, we're getting them. We're go- Let's go. I'm serious. You know, you know who's, we can do the show from there. You know who's organizing it? Who's that? Matt Wilson, the wolf. We're getting them. We're, we're in. Let's go. Okay. That's awesome. Arlington. I, that's, Released it seven minutes ago. That's on my uh, on the bucket list for me to go to a all, Major League Baseball All-Star game. Commissioner Manfred announced today 2024 All-Star game presented by blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And accompanying All-Star Week events to the Texas Rangers. Yeah! Awesome. Did you Fantastic. go when it was there in nope. 96? I've never been. Okay. Oh, the boy's going to love that. I can't just let you leave me for a week and not give you a pop quiz on the way out. Yeah. 
I understand. It's necessary. I understand. All right, Hex. Oh, puppy quizzy. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. These are bowl games. You have to tell me the sponsor for Uh, this year of the bowl games. And almost all these are Big 12 affiliated bowl games. They're they're Big 12 games. I'm not going to get it. All right. Out of the 10, I need. There's 10. I need six of them. Okay. I'm not going to get it. To get you a D passing grade. Starting off. We'll start on the higher side of things. This is in the college football playoffs semifinal. Fiesta Bowl. PlayStation. (laughs) It was PlayStation last year. Verbo. VRBO was the sponsor this year. (laughs) Oh, goodness. All right. Another college football playoff semifinal. The Peach Bowl. Chick-fil-A. Hey, we got one. One for two so far. Big 12 versus SEC matchup in a New Year's Six Bowl. Sugar Bowl. (laughs) You can pass if you want to come back around. Pass. Pass. Okay. The Alamo Bowl. Valero. Ding. It's the dad's company. So, got two so far. (laughs) This one. The bowl that's played in Orlando, formerly known as the Tangerine Bowl. Cheese it. Okay. I couldn't just give you that. (laughs) Straight up. Got three. Texas Bowl. This thing has been so much. Oh, this one I feel like changes every single year. It's one. This is a new one this year, by the way. I think. Is it gallery furniture? No. Tax Act. Tax Act. Hey! Oh, it's going to go down. All right, two strikes. Liberty Bowl. AutoZone. Got it. You got four. Only need two more. All right, the bowl that is now played in Phoenix. Was at one point the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl, the Insight Bowl, all of this. This is the one in Phoenix, and it's been named this for, I think, the last three years. Or this will be the third year. Still allowed to pass if you want to come back around to it because we got a couple more to give you. Okay. Yeah, pass. Okay. First responder bowl in Dallas. And there's also the armed forces bowl in Fort Worth. He's sitting at four, folks. (laughs) He's sitting on two passes. I don't. I, oh, <laughs> punch him out! Jeez, serve po, serve pro, first responder. Never would have got it. Really? No. Okay. Lockheed Martin. Lockheed Martin. Armed Forces. Should have got that. One. Fit, that one's been that way for a while. The Guaranteed Rate Bowl is the one that's been in Phoenix for like three years. I was gonna guess that. You said I was a pass. I was gonna come back. I said you could pass to it. You already struck out. Uh, I know, three. but oh, okay. you said I could get to six. But you got your three strikes first. Oh. You already got your three strikes. Weak. Um, Sugar Bowl is Allstate. Allstate Sugar Bowl. I think you and I, got that I attended that and couldn't pull it. Yeah, but yeah, you, you went not that long ago, didn't you? Wasn't that long ago. All right. Get your questions in. Handful of questions. Again, that was an illustration of how stupid it is with all these bowl names, sponsors, and... Switching them every year and naming rights is all dumb. Get your questions in. Ask the bench warmers headed your way next on 100.7 The Score. Playing time is not required. This is the end of the bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. That's right, it is time for Ask the Bench Warmers on 100.7 The Score and 107thescore.com. To my right, that is Jeff Haxton. I'm Choice Woodman. Jackson Frazier back behind the glass. Questions for any and all of us are welcome. Actually, quite a few questions in already, so we'll dive straight in. Uh, let's start with this one from earlier. 
Hacks, did you ever decide what excursion you're going to go on or going to do in paradise? You have to at least eat Hawaiian steak. Is that a thing? I've been and I don't remember like Hawaiian steak being a thing. I had like Hawaiian barbecue. You going to have some of that? Oh, yeah. 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 It's pretty gotta good. Gotta get that pig somehow. Gotta get that suckling pig. So, any excur- any excursions? Hot and not planned. Mm-hmm. Um, I may tag along with stuff the team is doing. That's okay. the bargain way of doing things. Hope mm-hmm. they'll let you on the boat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> any room here? But I usually don't do those things, so we'll see. Uh, Hacks, how are you handling the anticipation of the flight? That's from not, Brennan. Not good. Not good. Mm-mm. Remember, just remember. Hey, we're moving. <laughs> it's eight hours. Yeah, right. We're moving. That's not stationary. Yeah, not running routes on the tarmac at <laughs> Preston's. Yeah. Airport. What happened to the volleyball team? Too many oh, injuries. Yeah, and um, just think they got going the wrong way and and couldn't pull out of the nosedive. When I get back, I think I have. I get back on a Thursday. Should have a couple left, right? Yeah, I think I have one on Friday, so it'll be okay. get back and then get a sleep and then go do that. But uh, yeah, I returners, uh, six year players, sprinkled in some new bodies. I just don't know if they because ever, even at the beginning I, I, of conference play they were playing better. Yeah, I just don't think they ever had any chemistry, which mm-hmm. is wild. Mm-hmm. Someone said Jeff found you a shirt. <laughs> it's a, hey, it's I have seen those. Facebook knows that I love Thanksgiving. Oh, that's and funny. their algorithm has said this guy's a sucker. He'll buy this turkey shirt, mm-hmm. and I have not done it yet. So that means I'm not going to do it because we're past that time. Uh, Bobby Hot Dogs. If pa- Hacks passes this pop quiz, does he get to stay in the penthouse at Woodman Heights in Maui? Well, he didn't pass it, so we don't have to let him Dang. stay there in Maui. Uh, I actually, so we went to two islands in Hawaii. Did not enjoy my time very much at the big island, which was uh, Honolulu. Just Uh just way too touristy. Like Waikiki Beach was crazy busy. Yeah, didn't really. But I loved Maui. Maui was different. My dad's been exactly where we're going, and he's just thrilled for me. You know where you're staying? Yeah. Okay. Uh Uh-huh. Weston. That's fancy over there. Yeah. It could be living it large. Uh, I'm sure that's a package deal with the the whole tournament yeah. thing, huh? Bench warmers, if you got a chance, which would you rather do? Demolition Derby, monster Ooh. truck racing, or Ooh. motocross? It's from Bullfighter. Uh, Demolition Derby. Yeah, I've, that's like I want to do that. Motocross, I would die. Monster yeah, truck so, racing, or get probably maimed. Gonna you can die still get too. maimed pretty good in Demolition Derby, but. It looks so much fun. That would be. I think it'd be so stress relieving. <laughs> Bumper cars for grown ups. Just say, hey, yeah. here it comes. Yeah. And try to see how long you can keep your vehicle alive. I mean, that would be fun. Oh, it would be a it would be a blast. Like Dragging Charger, I think, would uh be the perfect <laughs> vehicle. Like, for all that. right. So when it gets to its last legs then yeah, it, last it, wheels it, and it, it, it's got so much wrong with it right now, but it just keeps right on running. Hacks, who are you going to hang out with the most in Hawaii? No one. You and, you and Sean not going to go? No, no, no. <laughs> hang around? No. <laughs> uh, I feel like no. he's a guy that would like quiet, too. Just like, yeah. Well, he's, just sit on the he's beach a little nuts. Nothing. He's a little. Little nuts? <laughs> Uh, and that's because he's uh, incredibly addicted to the game of basketball, yeah. and that's all he focuses on, and and uh, it's it's what keeps his heart beating. Bench sitters, actually, just choice because he's the only one that can afford them. Which makes the better coat, mink or beaver fur? <laughs> I don't know that I've ever felt a beaver coat. I probably have in one of those fur stores in the mountains. Uh, my grandma did have a mink coat, and it was. The softest thing ever. So I, I wouldn't mind a, a mink coat. I don't th- how, could, just go up there to Ohio. How could a guy ever wear it? Though? Start harvesting. Like a guy wearing a mink coat would be a little. Oh, thing. you could pull it off in choice. this part of the country. You could pull it off. Okay. All right. I'll get one then. 
Benchwarmers saw Chuck and Jamie gave their top five Big 12 basketball teams. What are yours? Oh. And they, they gave theirs yesterday pre uh, Gonzaga game, but I do think both had Baylor, Texas. Kansas, Texas, Texas Tech. And now, who's number five? TCU's got that loss. Oh, she's got a loss. I think mine. Oh, you's got a loss. I've got my number five team in, in mind. I haven't kept any. Uh, Iowa State, West Virginia, West Virginia, because they beat Pitt. They beat the doors off of Pitt the other night, and that's a Power Five win. I don't okay. know. Culver's, you know. I don't know. I, I think that West Virginia. Culver. Not Culver. Wait, Culver. Oh, he's gone. He long gone. Okay. I haven't watched any of it. I'm just going off of scores. So If Oklahoma State plays like they did at Oakland, they're a top true. five team. That's true. But that, if they play like they did against Southern Illinois, they're last place. Personally, I'd probably flip-flop your top two, by the way. I would go Kansas one just because they beat Duke the other night and they've They've got the best win in the league right now. Because I think Duke's a better team than Gonzaga is. Just watching them. So. Uh, da, 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 da. Cho- hmm. <laughs> Can't read that one. Is this at my expense or your expense? Oh, no, it's me. Uh, Hacks, you got your life raft aired up and ready to go? You guys are great on the chat line. In your windows. In your. <laughs> in your. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get to the, the Todd. weekend. I need to get to the weekend. Uh, Dylan says first flight ever for me was senior year to Hawaii. It was wild yet smooth. Uh, so I'm, I'm really lucky on this because it's a it's a very large plane mm-hmm. and it is not full, That's which nice. means. That's nice. Which means I, you know, won't have to inconvenience anyone with my death at thirty thousand feet. Mm-hmm. I think I'll be all right. I'm hoping. Uh, someone said, "Hacks, drink some Kona coffee and a tropical itch drink." Jet lag on that short trip shouldn't be too bad. I went to, I went to Nepal to hike Mount Everest. We've got, a, we've got an Everest hiker in our audience. Seventeen hours from Houston to Dubai, nine hour layover, and then six more hours to Kathmandu. It's pretty brutal. 17, nine-hour layover, six more hours. And then the I ju- don't want any part of that. Man, just the journey to base camp I know. Is- How do you like get your legs back before you go hiking on the toughest hike in the history of the world? Wow. Wow, I did not realize we had a Everest hiker. Very did you get, cool. Did you get uh, to the top? I'm curious on that. How high did you get up Everest, if, if that's the case? Did Have you, you see, watched that did you uh, see the documentary yet? I've seen a documentary on Everest, but I don't think I've seen the one that you were talking about. Well, this this uh, little incident caused a lot of those bodies you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dylan said, are the Zags bad or are the horns that They good? looked bad. Flat out bad. Oh, I don't want to be the, the cliche guy that's going to sit here and say Longhorns aren't good. They are. But, man, that Gonzaga team didn't look like they had an answer. And Mark Few teams usually early in the season look pretty good, right? I mean, we've seen a lot of Gonzaga teams win good games early in the season. This is a three-part mini-doc. It's an aftershock, Everest, and the Nepal earthquake. <laughs> so it said, so what? We have an Everest climber in the audience. We have a guy at Raymar that rescued Choice off of a mountain. <laughs> Jamie, I owe him my life. <laughs> I don't think it's rescue. Choice just uh, went to sleep. He just, he didn't rescue me. He just didn't leave me. I don't think he did a whole lot beyond that. Where was that at again? That was in New Mexico. We hiked the highest peak in New Mexico, Wheeler Peak. <laughs> he just didn't leave me. That was the only thing for the, the bears and the mountain lions. Mostly because he was scared of the mountain lions himself. And I had the gun. Hex. Enjoy, man. Sleeping with the gun, the Woodman story. Have fun in Hawaii. I'm going to try. For Hacks and Jacks, I'm Choice. It's been the end of the bench on 100.7 The Score.
This has been the End of the Bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. Go to 107thescore.com for more from the Double T Sports Network.